three years ago, we, uh, me and uh, all my close friend, we experienced uh, one in a lifetime experience. Uh, I will never forget that. We all have our own version about what happened that day. So, uh, there's some funny moment during that day. There's some memorable day, uh, part of that day. And of course, we learned a lot from that day. And we are happy to see one day you, you experience the same thing. And, and please send us a comment about it and uh, we'd love to hear it. If you have uh, also uh, personal tips that will be useful because we're happy to learn. And, and hopefully all of you can learn also from our experience and enjoy the video. So yeah, my name is Christoph. I'm living in Bali now for almost nine years. And um, I enjoy spearfishing, mostly. <laughs> I first started, I think, around five years ago. And um, maybe a little bit more, maybe seven years ago. And yeah, ba back then I, it was just uh, when the surf was slow, I wanted to get to the water and the ocean still. So I had a little mask and snorkel and I go, I see some fish. Later on, I asked an Australian friend of mine to bring me back a spear gun and uh, he get me that Australian one band 90 centimeter gun where I used to go on the reef. So I just started like this. <laughs> my name's Curtis and uh, I got, I've been in the diving pretty much all of my life, but I didn't get into spear fishing until um, I was living in Australia and working on some boats there and the guys I lived with were really into it. And um, I remember the first time I went, I, uh, I couldn't load the gun myself. Uh, it was really frustrating. A uh, sea snake came and tried to mate with the gun bands while I was learning. And, um, but that was in Western Australia and the diving was incredible and I really got into it there and I enjoyed um, just being in the ocean and um, knowing where your food comes from and being really selective about your fishing. And then probably almost 10 years ago though, I moved to Bali and when I went snorkeling here for the first time or went for a dive, I didn't think there were any fish and I didn't spear fish for probably another five or six years. And then um, a few years back, I finally went with some friends, uh, Tim Russo and Jake, and they got me into spear fishing again when I realized that um, Bali has a lot of great diving and a lot of great fish and it's just that not many places in the world compare to uh, West Australia. And then living here in Bali, I finally uh, teamed up with some good people to dive with who are diving on the regular a whole lot. Peter came to um, a Giyotaku class uh, that Desmond Thane had on at Drifter Surf Shop. And later me and Peter went on a trip to Java with the Manching Mania TV series crew. And uh, me and Peter, part of a challenge there to outfish the fishermen and we won. Uh, and then Peter started letting me coming on some uh, pretty cool dive trips with him here in Bali. Uh, he grew up here and he knows a ton of spots. So I knew that uh, I had to bribe this guy into showing me where some of them were. And uh, really changed everything about diving here. Uh, having a solid team of guys that are kind of into the same thing and uh, enjoying diving, not stressing out too much about catching fish, but still staying focused and um, really enjoying, uh, you know, knowing where our food comes from and being able to share fish with our neighbors. So uh, it's, been, it's been great having a team of people to dive with here. Uh, Brian's one of the guys that got into it. Okay, Brian from New York and I got into diving from these guys. Actually grew up surfing and uh, fishing with my old man, Rod and Reel, but never got into diving until I moved to Indonesia. And um, yeah, Curtis got me into diving finally. I used to come to um, Pandawa and, 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 and just surf rainy season waves and just kind of surf crummy surf over diving. And um, one day I, I came along with Curtis and that was it. After that day, I borrowed Jake McKenzie's 
spear gun and between him and Tim Russo and Curtis Lowe, I had a full plethora of dive gear from <laughs> the ghosts of divers past. <laughs> and it was awesome. And um, it just spiraled. It's just been a, a downhill spiral. I'm just hopelessly addicted to, to free diving and then um, everything that comes along with it. We like to eat fish. We like to hunt certain species, have fun with the boys, and it's just the best. My name is Peter O'Prandi, the owner of uh, Indo Spirit Fishing Charter. Diving pretty much for 18 years now. I started with my good friend Arvid. He got a gun from uh, his friend. We tried in a shallow reef, and after that, we went to Andre's shop and brought the proper gear. From there, I never stop. I become like a weekly thing. And I dive with many experienced divers, and that's how I learn a lot from them. Level of experience just increases significantly. And I really appreciate all those people that I dive with and for all the tip and the opportunity to learn. You always dive with someone who's better than you and take your time. I mean, don't, don't rush. Eventually you will get good. You will get that one fish that you dream of. When I, I get a little bit more into it and I have the complete equipment, finally I met uh, diving on the water, a guy called Angelo that owns the brand uh, Tixie. And uh, yeah, we decide to meet up and uh, do some gun testing together. And from there, a friendship started and uh, a lot more spearfishing adventure. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I think he, he's been like a mentor. He teach me all I know today and the rest of it was just uh, practicing and watching online videos and try to improve my techniques and uh, get myself as little as possible when I dive to not scare the fish. Yeah, uh, yeah, it was it was an epic day. Like uh, something I didn't know I would uh, encounter. Actually, like uh, I, di I didn't know what to uh, what to expect that day. But uh, it was clear, blue current was running. Um, we were lining up from drift, and uh, nothing has happened yet. And I remember. I wanted to pee and I don't like to pee my wetsuit so it's two parts so I just open up my wetsuit and start peeing and just the fish start to come underneath me and I'm like surprised like I saw so it looks pretty big I thought that was a school of shark at first and uh, I remember being surprised and just put back my pants as, as I could and uh, get to the bottom and see and there was maybe 20 or 30 of them and I was thinking wow that's not bad didn't shred any though, uh, come back to the surface, explain to my friend that there is fish around so everybody start to look for them. And uh, then we decided to get the boat and get repositioned on our drift and uh, to line up in the similar position. And then we bump into that big school. And uh, I had seen big school before, like maybe a couple, maybe a hundred of them. And I never seen something like that day. That day was like unbelievable. We got vortex by so many fish coming from all directions. And uh, we cannot even count them. I don't know how many there were, but maybe 300 in my field of view, and it could be even more. Uh, like until the end of the visibility line, and what I can see was just full of fish. And I remember looking at them and was like, wow, oh, I need to take a moment. And not thinking of the fish, but trying to film that 
scenery with the uh, entire school and the fish looks big like it's it's very surprising because when you see the video and they all the same size approximately you don't uh, really understand how big they are but i just took one that was in the high average of the school and it was around 25 kilo so there was definitely a few much bigger and uh, some smaller but i will say the average size of the school was around 20 kilo which was absolutely crazy incredible Singiri? <laughs> oh my god <laughs> all right i missed every fish <laughs> It's all Ireland. There you go, it's for people like him. There would have been like... <laughs> yeah, there would have been like over... Uh, I don't even know how many fish. Big mackerel. And Kurt was down there just whiffing them. <laughs> just whiffing. Uh, no, it was insane. That day was incredible. How many times as, as um, a fisherman when you... you go fishing and how many times when you go catching is two totally different things and that was like one of the only times when everything came together and it was just pristine it was like 20 25 meters of visibility um just as blue as can be and you could spot them from the surface which is just like a fun build up you know you can see them from the surface and you just get really pumped. It's really hard to breathe up and everything. You're just freaking out. Take a drop and you're just amongst like a hundred plus, hundreds of Tangiri that were like, I don't know, easily 15 to 30 kilo range. Um, it, I don't think there was much technique to it that day. You know, we were just in the right spot at the right time and having been there over and over and over again, it just finally worked out. And we got fish. <laughs> um, that one was probably, I don't know, like 20, 25 kilo. Yeah, it was a big one. Yeah, it was, it was a, a fatty. And um, took a drop, it was just amongst it. You know, at first they were really, at first we were all really um, excited and, and it was like, fish didn't want anything to do with us. The water was so clear. It was just so obvious that we were up to no good. Those fish were just over us. But um, as soon as one of the boys landed one, everybody calmed down. And that was when they started getting really comfortable around us. And yeah, I went down, took a drop, just swam amongst a school of fish. It was like overstimulating. There's just so many fish. They're really, again, we was just, just lucky that day to be surrounded by them. You know, sometimes you gotta like call them in, sometimes you gotta play the game, but that day was like classic. The stars were aligned, didn't really have to do much other than take a drop, line one up and, and take a shot. It was, it was as easy as can be. Don't ask Kurt that. <laughs> He's whiffing. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, I guess that day that we saw the um, really big school of Spanish uh, was this time of year. The viz had gotten really good. We'd, we'd been getting into some decent Tingiri and some Spanish before that, um, but we'd never had a day where we just saw hundreds of them. Um, and on top of that, the viz was as good as it gets. I mean, the visibility was 30 meters or something um, and, and a lot of times on days like that when it's almost too clear uh, you can't really get close to the fish or at least I can't um, when it's super clear it se seems to kind of help when it's a bit green and the fish wants to come in and check you out but this day I guess they were migrating or they were spawning and I just could not believe it when I saw the few small ones come underneath me and I tried to um, dive bomb them and just kind of really rushed it and uh, I took a horrible shot. I think I got the footage somewhere but I take this bad shot, miss this average size Hingiri, there's a group of like three or four of them 
and as I'm still, you know, down, I, I start looking around and there's just dozens and dozens, just so many really big, beautiful Spanish start coming over my shoulders from all directions. And like I could have just waited one second and gotten a great shot, uh, but I totally blew it. Um, and then I think it was the next drop I saw, or maybe even that same one, I looked over and Brian just took his time and eased into one of the biggest ones in the school and stoned it. Uh, just perfect shot. Uh, fished off, really cleaned up that day too. I'm sure you got some, Peter. Uh, but I think I went that entire day, saw the most Spanish I'd ever seen, like hundreds of them, and I didn't shoot a single fish. Uh, almost proud of it. <laughs> uh, and it was a beautiful day, it was great, it was really cool just to have seen something like that. Uh, but it still kind of stands out in my memory as a day that I, I saw more fish than I'd ever seen uh, here in Indonesia. I'd seen things kind of like that in Western Australia and Northwest Oz. Uh, outside of Exmouth, up there in the Portobellas. Um, big thanks to Nikki, if you see this somehow, over there in Exmouth, man, you and Pete. Uh, pretty cool trip. But um, yeah, I, I got to see hundreds of them, and I guess they were crossing the southern part of Bali, but I didn't get a single fish. There's several spots in, and in Bali that we find Spanish. Um, over time, we, we always encountered them in the same area. It will depends on current and tide. We see them always in the same situation. Usually they, they come in, uh, in schools uh, during the um, end of December. Three years ago, we experienced the most incredible uh, experience for, with Spanish mackerel. We never seen it before in our life, in Bali especially. I was not there on the first day when the boys saw all the Spanish messaged me and uh, they showed me the footage where they saw hundreds of hundreds of Spanish. I was supposed to dive the next day after them because that's why I didn't come with them uh, that day. I saw also the same thing and it was amazing. I never seen so many Spanish in Bali before. It, it went on for a week. Pretty much everybody got Spanish, good sized Spanish. And they were just there, just like what the boys uh, explained and described that day and they were just amazing to watch. I mean, I, I was um, pretty much paused for a second before I shoot and just uh, wanna uh, capture this moment and um, just to watch them, like the, the amount of Spanish was around. Uh, it's just a, a lifetime experience. We just go down slowly, no need to, sometimes we ignore the fish, pretend that we're not looking at it. And that's when we, the same depth as the Spanish, we just wait, come straight to you. And yeah, we, of course, we first uh, target was the, the biggest one of the group. And um, yeah, that day was good. We landed few. And I think a good tips I can give to anyone uh, that definitely change my way of spearfishing uh, was to try to get as close as possible from the fish. Like instead of going to the race of getting the biggest weapon and uh, trying to snipe the fish from far away, I just try to get uh, as close as possible until the last minute where uh, I can see in the eye of the fish that is, he got all the curiosity and he won't get any closer and take my time aim the gun where I think he's gonna go and just wait. Mm -hmm. Sit there and wait. And then when in front of me, take the best possible shot. I always try to go for a kill shot if, if there is an opportunity. Unless the fish is too big and I'm thinking I'm not gonna go through the head because it's too bony, then I will go to a center shot. Especially for those tangiri, it's hold very well and uh, yeah I think that's a good advice for anyone that get to spear fishing is relax go down 
uh, enjoy being out there and uh, you know when the fish come just stay calm not getting too exciting about it and uh, take the best possible shot like uh, if you sh lose the fish or if you take a bad shot it's a tear off you're just gonna scared that fish and maybe the rest of the school for the rest of the day and nobody else get fish. So it's important to choose the one and uh, if you don't have the correct shot, don't take the shot. You just wait and the next dive or the next 5-10 minutes probably you're gonna have another encounter and another chance. My, my first experience with Spanish was uh, a memorable one uh, because I learned a big lesson. I've seen Spanish many times before but never get close enough to for, for shooting range. So what happened is I, I I did the perfect shot, spine shot, the Spanish was rattling and because I, I didn't have enough time to pull the line so the flopper closed and then the, the the shaft just slide out and the Spanish was rattling and going down. Didn't have enough time to pick it because I just went up to the surface. Yeah, uh, one tip, make sure tension all time because if you even you kill shot it or spine shot it, there's chances that you will lose it. My second advice, have a responsible person on the boat because they have to keep an eye on you. I have an amazing boatman that I always use around Bali and for my charter, and there are my eyes from the uh, from the from the boat. Make sure we are all, all safe, and I, of of course I feel a lot better that someone is watching me from the boat, not only in the water. And of course, uh, third advice: you have a have to have a good dive buddy with you. That's very important, and to watch you all time. Uh, another tip, um, when you see the Spanish, you just go down slowly, take your time, just watch the, his behavior. He, if he's um, uh, a bit fronted with you, your present, then just ignore it. If he's not bothered by your present, then you can, if he doesn't come close enough, then you can charge and try to shoot it closely. Uh, especially when they turn their back, you can start spinning and go toward them and shoot them. Another advice will be, um, uh, trying to take a, a close shot. I mean, uh, I know some of you use rollers and uh, maybe a three band uh, gun, but um, it doesn't mean that because the gun is powerful, you, you, you can take a long shot. I, I highly recommend, uh, because it's Spanish, you can get really close. So take your time, learn the fish, and try to shoot it properly. Um, I usually shoot the mid body if the fish is big. If the, if the fish is a decent size, I'll try to spine shot it. Uh, if the fish is really comfortable with you and um, not bothered by you, yeah, you can try to kill shot it. The most important, just, just be relaxed when they're around. Uh, try to not get too excited because the, the fish are, sense it. You will get many chances with the Spanish. My advice? Just, you know, learn from the best and take your time. So shore diving is how I, I really got into uh, diving for mackerel here and um, started out mostly just getting lucky, but seeing them from the surface and Spanish won't always let you dive bomb them, but some of the best fish I've gotten have been ones that just swam right under me and I've dropped down behind them and they'll kind of slow down because they're curious and you close the gap and um, get in a good range and they'll let you take a good shot on them. Uh, but I think the best fish I've gotten have usually been when I'm on the bottom and I'm usually looking for other fish and kind of being patient and Tingiri or Spanish have this really cool way of like sort of like in like Star Trek or something they come in at like warp speed and just slow down right next to you and you look over 
and this it just comes right in and they'll, they'll take a pass right in front of you because they're pretty staunch curious fish and um, uh, other than um, t you know really slow movements and not seeming too twitchy or eager kind of channeling your inner sea turtle seems to be the best way to um, get a good shot on a nice vanish and uh, they're not a, they're not a crazy strong fish like a doggy or anything and they'll usually run sideways but uh, they will bend your shaft and I like using a slip tip or if you're still using a flopper which works great uh, getting that 45 degree angle where you're kind of shooting it from the back but at an angle into the head uh, it's my favorite shot. Um, I've had a few with double floppers where it's been a great shot, maybe even like semi stone shot where the fish is just doing that kind of death rattle. And as it flips upside down, if the flopper doesn't engage, it, the shaft can slide right back out. And I've lost a couple of really good fish that way and kind of gone back to slip tips on my bigger gun. Uh, shout out to Andre for the new slip tips are really good. I really like them a lot. They're really low profile and sleek. But on one of the worst ones I have, I've had, I, um, I saw it as I was swimming back to the surface. The fish was shaking and I, I looked back down and I watched the shaft drop out of it. And it had been a pretty short dive and I still had a good hold. So I kind of thought, not today, man. And swam back down after the um, fish as it was just twitching its way down to the seafloor and had this kind of hectic chase where I was chasing the fish that was off the shaft but it was almost stoned and chased it all the way down to the bottom and luckily it crashed into some rocks down at the bottom into this little ledge and was able to recover the fish and bring it back up. And that was a really good feeling to, to, to do that, not black out. And uh, fish stop was right there when I got to the surface, which is good uh, because that was something that I, you know, general rule is never go back down after a fish. Um, but I knew he was there and had been a, sh uh, you know, had a good dive, a good hold. Uh, so it wasn't too out of line. But you re this is one of the reasons why you really want to be watching your dive buddy is uh, something like that could happen and just one thing goes wrong, a second thing goes wrong, and then a third thing goes wrong and um, you could lose somebody. So um, big thanks to the guys I dive with for watching out. And um, yeah, check your gear, check your floppers.